Good morning. Welcome to Crosspoint Online, and we're just so glad that you joined us this morning. We would love for you to connect right now with the church by commenting below during the service. We would also like for you to take a next step and reach out to us. You can do so by clicking the link in the description or by reaching out to us on any of our social media platforms. We would also love for you to partner with us financially. You can do so by texting the word GIVE to 903-329-2828. Or you can head over to our website, crosspointfellowshipchurch.com, and click on the GIVE tab. Once again, we love it so much that you're here with us this morning. Let's worship God together. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see y'all. Let's stand up together. Let's welcome God into this place. Father, we love you. Lord, we welcome you here, God. We welcome you into our lives, God, into our homes for those watching online, God. And we just pray that your spirit overwhelms us with your peace, God, and that we can worship you for who you are. It's in Jesus' name that we say together, amen.
can we lift up a shout of praise to God this morning for all that he's done, all that he is going to do. Father, we believe, as that song says, that your presence is here, Father. So we welcome you into this place, God, and we give you all the glory. And Father, it may, it may seem like uh, we're getting back in a routine and it's just another Sunday, but Father, it's not just another Sunday. Every day, your grace is new. Father, that means you restore us every day. Every day we get up, you have, you have a, new, a new love to show us, a new grace, a new peace. God, so we welcome that into this place, into the church, God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
God, we are so desperate for you. God, and sometimes that means we have to run out of, run after you in, in circumstances that we may not want to be in. But Father, there is, there is hope and there is breath in your name and the powerful name of Jesus. God, and we praise you for that. That no matter, that no matter our circumstances, there is still that power in your name. God, it's an old truth, but it's one that stands firm today as much as it ever has. We praise you for that. God, I pray right now that we can all just focus on you. God, we can focus on the blessings that you so freely give us. And in this next song, God, I pray over every family here. I pray over every, every family represented here, every family at home watching right now. God, that we stay, that we stay in your presence, God, that we stay focused on you and that we receive the blessings, Father, that you so freely give us, God, and we don't, we don't push anything away, Father. I pray that we don't, we don't follow our own agendas, agendas Father, but, but we pray, God, that we stay in line with your spirit. church of our family. up. Amen together, church.
children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor trust in the Lord, no matter what we're going through, no matter what battles we face, no matter how big the obstacles, let's lift our voice together, church. Let's sing amen.
God, thank you for the praying men and women in this church, God, that you have blessed us with, people that we can rely on, people that lift up others, that pray for others when they can't even pray for themselves. God, we pray an extra blessing on those people right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that as we move on in this service, God, that you receive the glory. God, that you have your way in our lives. God, we love you so much and we cannot express it through song alone. We gotta express it through our actions, through everything that we do Monday through Saturday, not just on a Sunday morning. God, show us those paths and those roads that we need to take to show the world the love of Jesus Christ and that there is hope. No matter what pandemic is going on, that there is hope in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Good morning, guys. It is an honor and a blessing to be back here with you guys. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Brendan Shannon. I am 16 years old. I'm a, a member of the youth here at Kilgore, and uh, I go to Kilgore High School. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, once again, it is amazing to be back here with you guys. So today we are going to be going into a story of David. We're going to be diving into Psalms 34. Before we go into this, I would like to share some background information, though. Uh, so on what's going on before we actually dive into this psalm, so in this moment, David is actually running from the king Saul, the king of Israel. Um, he's running because Saul, Saul didn't like him because he, he felt like David wanted to take his throne and was going to take his throne. So Saul didn't like that, and Saul was out to get him. And David had the bright idea while he was running away from Saul to go into a Philistine city called, <clears throat> called Gath. Um, so that means that he's got two kings coming after him in this moment. He's got the king of the enemy city of Gath, and then he's got the king Saul of Israel. The reason I haven't said the name of King Gath is because I do not know how to say it. King A, I'm not even going to try. I really was. <laughs> so th these two people are out to get him, and when I say people, you know, it's king. It's like having the president of the United States and like the queen of England after you. It's, it's not a good situation. So in order to get out of this situation, what he did was he acted like he was crazy, like he had gone mad. And the reason he did this is because back then they found it immoral and wrong to kill someone who had gone mad or gone crazy. So King A sent him off and sent him, to, sent him away because he didn't like him either. So while he was traveling, he found a cave in a place called Adalom. And it, in this cave, he found a sort of refugee camp with roughly 400 people in it and they were they were running away from a difficult life in judah so now we are up to date on david's situation we are we're ready to dive into the psalm now now that we have some background information on what was going on so if you'd like to turn to it in your bibles this is psalms 34 verse 1 through 7 and if not it's on the screen behind me so that you can read along i will praise the lord at all times i will constantly speak his praises I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. 
He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles, for the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. So once again, let's, let's think back on the, on the situation David is in. Da- David was running from two kings who did not like him at all, and they were out to get him, to kill him. So he had two close encounters with death, two times in a row, back to back. It was kind of a bad situation. He dug himself in a hole, and the more he tried to get out of it, he was digging himself even further. As we finally see in these verses here, he says, I prayed, and the Lord answered me. He, he also says he listened to me. I prayed, and the Lord answered me. So the title of this message and also the series that we're in is called Brutally Honest. So if it's cool with you guys, I'd like to get a little honest in here rather than sitting down and just kind of protecting our pride. Is it cool if we get a little honest? Sweet. We as in humans have really messed up once again. And I say once again because if you look back to the Bible, we couldn't get a couple of pages with our existence without messing up. We couldn't get a couple pages through. But once again, today we have messed up up. I mean, think about it. When was the last time you just heard something positive? You have to really look for it now. All you ever hear is negative things when you turn on the TV or open up your phone. All you ever hear about is sickness, loneliness, people losing their jobs. And now we have hurt people hurting people, and then we have other hurt people fighting a back against hurt people. We have blind people following blind people and sheep following sheep. This is what we're in, and all we ever All we ever hear is negative things. And I have a question. As humans, as body of believers, as as all of the things we fall into, what are we doing? Because whatever it is, it isn't right, and we can't do it on our own. Let's go back to that verse 1. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will praise Him all the time. Not when I want to. Not whenever I'm feeling good, not only in Sunday mornings, and not only during worship because it's something we do to check off the church box. That's not, that's not what he said. I will praise the Lord at all times. So as believers, we, we should be doing that right now in our daily lives. So for those that are sick, let, let's pray. In the loneliness, we need to praise God, not just sit and be sad. We need to praise God. God and the heartbreak for the people who are losing their jobs we need to pray and we need to try and find a solution through God and to God not by ourselves so let's pray so one time in human history it is time for us to just let go and let God for one time I mean right here in this psalm this is exactly what David is telling the people even though he was just in a hole that he dug himself and was leaning on his other understanding, but when he prayed and God answered him, he was so grateful, and he said, you are alive. This is what he was telling to the people in the refugee camp. You are alive because God blesses you, so let's praise him. We are all here for a reason. It's because God blesses us, and that's exactly what David was telling those people. No matter how hard he fell on his face before, he just got up and prayed. He says that those who look to him will have no shadow of shame on their face. He said those who look to him will be filled with radiant joy. So instead of letting the world put a shadow of shame on our face, instead of allowing that by turning on the TV and focusing in on on certain things that are not good, why don't we let God fill our face with radiant joy rather than the shadow of shame? So I want to dive more into this psalm and go into verse 8 through 10 once again. You can find this on on your Bible, in your Bible app, or it'll be behind me. Psalms 34, verses 8 through 10. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Um, I'd like to address something real quick before I, I keep going. Um, The meaning of fearing God. It's not the kind of fear you get after watching Chucky the Horror Movie or something. It's not that kind of fear. It's, It's to hate evil things. To fear God means to hate evil. 
So with that being said, how much are we fearing God? How much, how much evil are we putting in our, he our head all the time? How much hate are we constantly filling ourselves with all the time? Are we truly hating evil or are we filling ourselves with it? How much hate goes across our minds every time we get on our favorite social media? How much anger or argumentative state of mind are we, are we feeling every time we open our favorite social media or our favorite news source? He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Keep in mind, he never said sit and watch that the Lord is good. He said, taste and see that the Lord is good. But in order to, to taste, what first you must do is you must eat in order to taste something. So what he's saying is, in order, in order to see godly things, you must continue to feed your soul and your spirit godly things. We can't expect positivity when all we do is feed ourselves negativity. If we want to see the godliness, we must feed ourselves the godliness. But you see, that doesn't only work one way. We're not feeding ourselves God or not feeding at all. We're either feeding ourselves positivity and holiness or hate and darkness and shadow and sin. What are we feeding ourselves? Because it's one or the other. Because if, if we just continue to eat the dark things, we cannot expect holiness. We have to eat the right food. I mean, no matter how saved we might think we might be, no matter how long we've been going to church or how long ago it was when we first dedicated our life or how much we've done for the church, if we do not continue to feed ourselves godly things, we will fall and we will fail just as hard as David did whenever he started eating negativity too. Because if I'm being brutally honest with you guys, if we consume darkness, the darkness will consume us and will consume our thoughts, our lives, our families, our everything. If we are not living and leading in our faith, then we will fall as flat on our face as David did whenever he was doing the same thing, running from the kings. Let's not forget that the only reason we are even here is because of him and his Holy Spirit. And yes, I know that whenever I was talking about in this psalm that we're reading, Jesus had not come and died yet. But now in this place, in this day, Jesus has already came, lived, and died for us. The reason we are here is because of all of those things. And during these times of negativity, it's like, I don't want to include God. I'm going to push him away and ignore him because, well, I got this one. I, I don't want to include God in my politics. That's not something I want to do. So, so I'm going to just push him away for now. But you see, God didn't do that when we prayed to him asking for forgiveness. And God didn't do that when he knew we needed it and we didn't pray for it. He took action. He took action on us. No matter how fast we run away from him or how far we run away from him, somehow we will always run back into him. I mean, with all the negativity we see, where are we at right now? We're in church. Whether we got ourselves up or your parents or your girlfriend dragged you here. I mean, we've all been there at one point in our life. We're here, and that's for a reason. It's because God wants us. I mentioned, I mentioned Jesus earlier, and I'm telling you right now, God did not send his son to die for us. And yes, I don't know anything about a son. I don't have children, but I do have a dad. And I, we just went to the beach, and we had a great Father's Day weekend. And, but what I'm telling you right now is I could not send my dad to die for people who don't even like me, let alone people who, you know, don't like me. I mean, like, who, like, really don't like me. I'm going to just send someone I love to die for you. But that's what God did. And he did not send his son to die for people he tolerated. He didn't. He didn't send his son to die for people. He sent his son to die for the people that were his children. And that's each and every one of us. No matter how saved we are, no one is better than anyone else in God's eyes. And I can tell you right now this problem we see on the news every single day or on our phone, it's not a political problem. It's just not. It's a God problem or a lack of God problem. It's a Godless problem. So right now, we need to go back to verse 1, heavier than ever, and praise God all the time. And I'm not saying go through the streets and sing songs. I'm, singing's not meant for all of us. My biggest fear is this mic's going to come on during worship. I'm telling you. So I'm not saying be weird, okay? But I'm saying live a life that is praising God. Because I'm telling you, you don't have to go around preaching to every single person on the street for people to notice you live different. 
you don't. And God blesses us, and that's what we need to do. We need to include God in everything that's going on right now if we want to see any change for the better. So I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I had, a, I had a sermon prepared for this entire psalm until I read the first verse of the psalm. And then I realized that really with all that's going on, I could preach on that one verse all day. Praise him all the time is what it basically says. That's what we need to hear. That's why I keep said it and said, and saying it and saying it because that's what we need to hear. So when life throws curveballs at us, as it's going to forever, even when we're saved, it's not going to stop. We must praise God. Not focus on the bad because we cannot solve our problems. David is proof of that. We cannot solve our own problems. See, in praise that I've been talking about, God gave us praise not as something to do at church. Praise is a weapon to shift our focus away from the negativity. So let's use our weapon to be positive. To be positive. I mean, no matter how hard David fell on his face and knew he messed up, the second he prayed to, prayed to God and he got out, he went to those people and said, praise God. And that gives me hope. That no matter how bad we can mess up, we still have the ability to say, praise God. He doesn't abandon us. That's not how that works. Before I leave, kinda, I want to leave you guys with this. i just put this down here real quick. What I just did was I just poured all the salt out on this table. Well, not all of it. But this, this is the saltiness in my life. This, this is all the negativity I focus on. And right now, it's not that much. It's not that big of a mess until I start to magnify it. And I get a magnifying glass, and I focus on this. This is a bigger problem, but all it takes to add more salt is to just turn on the news. To do your own research online. To talk to your coworkers, your friends, and your family about it. Now we're focusing our life, so now we're pouring and looking through the magnifying glass, and I'm just making more and more of a mess, and this salt pyre is getting thicker and thicker. But here's the thing about salt. And if you can, I'm sorry, but me, I can't. Maybe because I'm slow, maybe because I'm not. I don't know. I cannot think of ten foods right off the bat that does not have salt in it or on it. There's salt on, like, everything. Salt tastes good, especially when combined with things. Salt tastes good. So something, I mean, in this nice little sparkly pile, it's shiny, kind of looks like sugar to an extent. It, it's nice to look at, even though it's a mess, and it tastes good. I put it on about everything I do or eat in my daily life. It's nice. So why would I stop pouring it out? But here's the thing, the more and more we feed ourselves just salt, our mouth is going to get bitter. Our life is going to get bitter. Our thoughts are going to get bitter, but it doesn't matter because it's so pretty and initially tastes good. So I'm still going to watch the news every day, and I'm still going to tell my friends and family about it, and I'm still going to start arguments over it because I know the people who don't agree with me, and I'm still going to do this because I think a certain way. I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled to live this way. That's how I, that's, that's how I live, and I'm just, no matter how big it's gotten, I'm still magnifying it. Now I just have more to magnify. Now this has consumed my life and my entire life is bitter, but I don't care because it looks pretty on the outside. And it tastes nice initially. And I'm just going to continue to share this with everyone I know and everyone I love. But you notice how the one thing that can help this, I put under the table and have not talked about this entire time. This cross... And I'm not sitting here, and I'm not going to tell you he's just going to come and clean all of the mess in your life. Because honestly, we're just going to keep making mess. And also what God's going to do is he's not going to come up to the table and see that mess and go, ah, uh, clean that. I, I'm, I can't sit on that. I can't be in the same table as that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. He's not going to try and clean the table out of anger by flipping this table over and the salt will come off. But then I'll have another mess to clean up. He's not going to try and help us through doubt and just clean half of it, separate it, and be like, well, I tried. You're too messy. 
I can't. I can't. It is when we invite the cross to come in the middle of this mess. And no matter how dirty it is, he does not care because he loves us. This salt on the table, he sent his son to die on the cross because of this salt. Because of that. This is the negativity. And honestly, with the cross there, we're still going to we're still going to have to check ourselves because we're going to pour salt out at a time. We're going to have to check ourselves. We're going to have to have other people check us. Because ultimately, that's still going to happen. But another reason this salt's so bad, if you have an open wound, if you have a cut, and I were to take this and rub it on the open wound, it would burn. So when you add salt on the already previous hurt, it stings even worse. But it just looks so pretty. And it isn't until we take this cross and we understand that he's not gonna, he's not gonna just sit here and make us perfect, because that's not what's gonna happen, because we aren't perfect. That's not what's gonna happen. But when we understand and we invite him to come in the middle of this mess and to take over our mess and stop moving the table away from him and invite him, that is when we see a change for the better in our lives. That is when we see a better for the, that's when we see our views change when our heart breaks for what breaks his heart. And it isn't until we stop magnifying the salt and start magnifying the whole cross that it becomes our thoughts that are holy and our food that is holy and that we move into God's greatness and his love. It isn't until then that we'll see a change for the better in this world and in ourselves. So let's as a church, a body of believers, Stop trying to take control of our negativity because it's going to happen. We're going to be negative. I check myself all the time in my own thoughts for being negative. Let's let God take control of our negativity because obviously we don't do very well with our own negativity. So let's God, let's let go and let God. Let's focus on God rather than our worldly politics. Let's focus on God rather than our side agenda. Are we more focused on what's going on with who is in charge of the things of this world? Or are we more focused on who is in charge of the kingdom of heaven, which we are all invited to spend eternity with our great God in? Which one are we more focused on? So once again, he didn't send his son to die for people he tolerated. He sent his son to die for his children. He blesses us every second with the air in our lungs. Jesus focused on the kingdom. Why shouldn't we? We need to focus on the kingdom more than more than our nation and more than our world. We need to focus on the kingdom of God, which is ultimately our world and our stuff too, because he invites us to it, because he loves us. The kingdom of heaven, the place God has prepared for those who believe and receive him and his son, Jesus. Let's praise him. Life's not perfect, but we can praise him all the time even in the negativity things, especially in times like now. Because he gave it to a weapon. He gave us praise as a weapon to defeat the enemy when he tries to get in our head. Just praise God. So let's stop acting like enemies and start acting like brothers and sisters that are bonded through Christ. Because God loves each and every one of you. And I'm going to be honest, whether I'm close to you, whether I don't know you, or whether I know you like family, I love each and every one of you in here because we all have a common interest or a common thing or something in common, is that we're all here right now. I love this church, and when I say church, I mean this church could be in a completely different building or outside, and I would still love this church. Because the church is the body of believers, which we are all a part of right now in this moment. God loves us, and love is ultimately what we need to spread right now, not hate, not arguments, not bitterness, not salt. We need to spread the cross. We need, because we can make a difference. Rather than arguing, rather than opening up to start arguments, whenever people try and argue with you, just bring up your God. Whether they want to hear it or not, they know where you stand. My great God, who loves you no matter what your opinion is. We have different opinions. And God loves us all. And that's just the brutal honesty of the situation. Is we can think different, but ultimately at the end of the day, when we are in heaven, we will all be one race, and that is the body of believers. We will all come together as brothers and sisters, that we truly are. I'm going to be brutally honest with you again. I almost didn't get up here today, 
I almost didn't write this sermon overall because honestly, the, the attacks from the enemy are real. They're real, but I want to tell you the difference between our God and our world. Our God lifts us up in love and tells us we can, tells us what our purpose is and loves us and comforts us. But the world will sit there and say, you can't do that. Why are you even trying? The world says, no, it's okay to sit and watch God's love. They don't want you to see God's love. But God wants to lift you up for what your true potential is. God loves us and is worthy of our praise. Today I want to pray a very specific prayer before we close. So if you will, I want us all to stand for prayer today. I'll stand in a moment of prayer. Let's focus on God. Let's just take a moment to focus on Him and His purpose. So if you would, bow your heads and let's pray. God, we need you more than ever right now. Right now is a, a time of broken hearts and a time of loss of jobs and sickness. That's, that's what we're in right now, God, and we, we cannot fix it on our own. God, we need you every second of the day, and we need to praise you every second of the day because you are going to be the one that delivers us. God, it doesn't matter what our political views are or what, what our racial views are. It doesn't matter because we all have one thing in common at least, is that we are your children. We are one race. No matter what's going on right now, we know that you love us and we invite you to come take over our lives and, and our church and our nation and come bring the peace that we need because we aren't going to do it and David was proof of that and each and every one of us when we messed up are proof of that. God, thank you for everything and I pray that you would come in our lives and help us when we need it. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms and reach out to us.